What's happening guys, it's Silent Mike. Before we hop into the video, I got a big announcement. You've been requesting it, tons of awesome support and feedback for Kaizen, and right now we're starting our Black Friday sales early. The biggest sale we've ever had, everybody's been asking for the sales. Right now, description below, get the programs, lead towards your goals, 50% off everything on the website. Go get it now, thumbs up, enjoy the video. Happy Black Friday. What's happening guys? Welcome to the video again. Happy holidays. Black Friday has come early for Kaizen. It's also mixed in with our one year anniversary. So if you're trying to increase your lifts, build a better physique, lose fat, whatever the goal is, and you've been on the edge and you want a little bit of a plan, some more in-depth informational videos plus PDF and of course programming by myself and my team, check it out. Link below, 50% off everything. Now let's get into the video and help your squats out my team. Right so far, my man looks really, really solid. The one thing I talk about often is tempo or pace in a squat. Um, how you move uh, up, down, left, right, knees out, hips back, etc., is all very important in powerlifting, but the pace of powerlifting is very important too to make it optimal. One, for control, and then two, to kind of take advantage of that flex reflex. Your actual form uh, looks really, really solid. One thing I'd suggest is try looking up a little bit. Uh, there's nothing wrong with looking down, but I think if you tucked your chin and almost looked more on the horizon, it would feel a little bit better for yourself. Uh, stance looks really solid. Knees are in a good position, but we have to kind of time that rebound out of the hole. Uh, you can't see it as much from this angle, but from the other angle, you could see that you hit the hole kind of stuttered, and then your hips would shoot up, chest fall forward. If you can time that a little bit better and take advantage of that rebound, uh, strength over time will increase. I'm not talking about bottoming out. I'm not talking about dive bombing. I'm talking about just a good tempo and aggressive in and out of the hole. Uh, another thing that's helped me and a lot of people is thinking about throwing your back into the bar. When I think about getting as tight as I can, my lats, my stomach, everything's tight. Then from out of the hole, all I think about is pushing my back into the bar. Uh, if everything is tight in between, your legs will do the job and the rest is good. That rep right there, very smooth. I think it's this one. You can see the hips move a little bit early and they get a little bit behind you and under max loads, that will be the difference between a make and a miss. But uh, let me tell you, your form is really, really solid. Continue to keep pushing those knees forward. I think chin up just a bit might help with that as well. Um, and then as well as shoving your back in the bar. And I don't mean shrugging up. You're not actually moving your shoulders. I just think about pushing with my back, almost like a conventional pull. Uh, the, the, the squat and the conventional pull are not that far apart from each other. Obviously, the torso lean is going to be a little bit more drastic in a conventional pull for the majority of people. Uh, the angle, the hip angle. But otherwise, the movement's going to be very, very similar muscularly. And I think in your head, once you get as tight as you can, if you can make those similar as well, uh, the better off you'll be. Uh, you can experiment again with that chin position and also a slightly narrower stance may allow uh, your knees to go a little bit more forward and allow you to control those hips out of the bottom. Um, but generally speaking, really, really, really solid squats, my man. Moving on to the next one, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know where all these gyms are growing up. Uh, up until super training or even yeah before that I had no gym with like bumpers and plates I mean maybe it's university maybe that's where you guys are at a bunch of schools uh, but I never had dope plates like this all right now let me start by saying nothing is absolutely wrong with this squat but what I can say is that we might be able to improve it a little bit um, that back position um, I know it's hard for some people to get the bar in a lower bar position it feels uncomfortable it feels like it's rolling down your back Often the case is going to be uh, you'll feel the most comfortable when you can move your grip in as close as you can. It will be uncomfortable. Uh, and then you're going to squeeze your back as tight as you can and then place the bar on your rear delts. Uh, this is going to work the, for the best for most. Now elbow position, I get a lot of questions about. Should they be pointing back or pointing down? Uh, I don't have a preference. I think it will mostly depend on how big your back is and how mobile your shoulders are. As long as that bar is stuck in a position and your elbows don't move, throughout the motion. You don't want to start with your elbows down and then they shoot back. That'll cause uh, you to get pitched forward. As long as they're stuck in position, I think you're okay. So right here, I think you can move your grip in. Uh, I'd also like to see your eyes up just a hair. And I also think you can move that stance in a bit. Your knees uh, are just floating on the inside of your foot through this entire squat and it makes your hips uh, move a little bit funky. If you move your stance in so that your knees can be exactly in your midfoot during the entire squat, I think you'll feel a lot stronger and a lot more stable. You're very upright, which is fine. <clears throat> Excuse me, it looks like you have a little bit longer of a torso and a little bit shorter femurs, and that's 
typically kind of how you see those Olympic uh, weightlifters squat so upright. Now, the goal isn't always to squat upright. The goal is to keep that torso uh, stuck in whatever position your body allows you to stay. You don't want uh, more that angle to increase throughout the squat, and you don't want more or less torso lean than when you start with. Leaning forward is not going to make or break you. That rep right there is actually, actually probably my favorite of yours. And again, just move that stance in just a hair. Uh, really solid work, my man. Another pretty dope looking gym. Let's see what we got. Beltless, sleeveless. You don't give no shit. Nice solid walkout. We're a little far away here. I'm trying to see. Really, really good. So again, uh, the mechanics right here look solid. Uh, we just have to keep that pace. If you're doing a pause squat, make it an apparent pause squat. If you're not doing a pause squat, you need to work on timing of the lift. And so when I think about uh, pulling myself down into the hole, I almost think about my feet being in bindings like a snowboard or something, and I'm attached to the ground. As soon as I'm tight everywhere else, I think about pulling myself down into the hole and then driving up hard. The timing in which you go down should not increase. You shouldn't accelerate into the hole, but you can go quickly. Be quick, but don't hurry, as you guys have heard me say years and years and years of coaching. Uh, you want to be under control, but you also want to be aggressive with it. So a couple of these reps are really good. If you are pause squatting, that's fine. That's a great accessory or supplemental exercise. Um, but what we need to do is focus on pacing. And so oftentimes when we're in a peak or a prep, especially under the Kaizen programming or my programming, we'll do a lot of singles, doubles, and triples uh, with uh, anywhere from 70 all the way up to 90, 95% because we need to work on not only our form being good and, and the less reps will allow us to do that, but also the timing and pace of handling varying loads. You know, if you can do... Uh, perfect triples at 70%, then we need to work on doing perfect triples at 75%, 80%, 85%, etc., cetera, all the way up to our max. Uh, because of that pacing, if you try to pause squat with 100%, uh, or you try to stutter, or you accelerate into the hole, something bad may happen, uh, not only injury-wise, perhaps, if you're accelerating into the hole, uh, but also just chances are you're not going to lift as much weight, rather than if we control ourselves down, but still be aggressive, and then explode as hard as we can on the way up. Uh-oh, we got a natural born squatter here, my friends. Uh, same thing, you know, I, I can't speak to you guys, obviously, but if you have a little bit of shoulder issues uh, or whatever, you may have to adjust your grip, but I like everyone to get their grip as tight into their shoulders or close to their body as possible, even if it's a little bit uncomfortable. We have to figure out for ourselves as we're athletes the difference between comfort, being uncomfortable, and actual pain. Uh, but the tighter our grip is, the tighter our back's going to be. Uh, overall, really good. I'd say the pace is going to be another issue here uh, with yourself. That second one's a little bit better. You get pushed forward just a bit. Um, but the tempo going into the squat and out of the hole is going to be vital for your success under heavier loads and to increase your weight. Yes, volume and yes, frequency uh, allows you to train more and more um, and get more strength and more muscle over time. But if we're not focusing in on that technique and focusing in on the details of the squat or what we need to work on, then you'll never improve. That's kind of like uh, playing basketball and all you're doing is shooting half-court shots. Sure, maybe you'll get a little bit better at half-court shots, but it's not going to make you a better basketball player until we start focusing in on how our form is on our shot, working on free throws, working on three-pointers, working on pull-ups. Hopefully, we've got some basketball people out there or sports people that can at least semi-understand that reference. But we not only want to focus on our sets, reps, and what weight we're supposed to use in our training sessions to build volume, to build strength, to build muscle, but we want to focus in on our timing. We want to focus in on our tightness. We want to focus in on our uh, head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees, and toes to focus in uh, and improve our lifts as well as improve our strength over time. Um, so overall, form is really, really solid. you got a higher bar position. I'm not going to try to change you, um, but what I would focus on uh, is try and move that stance in just a hair, uh, really breathe into that stomach, and we need to work on the pacing coming in and out of the hole. You you can see a little stutter, especially with the slow-mo, you can see the little stutter uh, where you're almost uncomfortable in the hole and you're accelerating into it the last foot. Is this the same gentleman, different gentleman? I can't even tell. It might even be the same gentleman. It looks like the same gym. 
I don't know, but either way, we're going to talk about him like he's different. Uh, the form looks <laughs> very similar, and the gentleman does too. I can't tell, and the squat rack looks very similar as well. Uh, but this squat looks really, really solid. Uh, again, a higher bar position. The, the, the grip is a little bit further out than I'd like to see. The tighter you can get your hands into your body, the tighter your traps and lats are going to be, and the more rigid your midline will be to transfer that power from the ground uh, your legs into the ground and into the bar. Uh, you get a pitch just a hair forward coming out of the hole. Again, I think the pacing will help improve that, as well as the cue that we talked about with the first gentleman driving your back into the bar out of the hole. I do appreciate you guys. If you want to get involved, send your videos to askmikke at gmail.com. Give this thing a thumbs up. Share with your friends and grab a Kaizen program now. Sales lasting only a couple more days. Thanks, I'm out.